Today, I am going to be talking about props. Hi, Rachel, good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. What are we doing today for your session? So we are going to show everybody how to food style a curry. Um, we chose that because it's quite challenging. I try and avoid using very large dinner plates. I'm sort of going around here as I get my bits and bobs. There we go. So something like that. So it's sort of white and large and sort of shiny. And um, it can be quite difficult um, for exposure reasons. The uh, food may be dark or dull uh, and therefore can overexpose the plate and the plate can be bright and shiny. On the flip side, sometimes if you're not really controlling your exposure carefully, uh, the white plate can go grey. Often, especially if you're working on editorial projects, a darker mid-tone works so much better. This works really well. And this one as well, and I hold that one up. They're not too shiny, they're a bit matte, they're not highly glossed, and food looks really good on it. And also this one I love a lot, I got it in a uh, antique shop. And you see it's a little bit marked, it looks a bit grubby, uh, but it's really nice and it works really well. If you're doing an English or a roast dinner or a traditional something, um, quite often these sort of plates work really well. Whereas I really like this one, funnily enough, I'll put this one, which I love, this one, which is plastic. It's a lovely colour, it's got a nice edge, and I can see all sorts of things on that. Uh, you know, salads, healthy salads, um, you know, grains and pulses, like, you know, summery or just a bit dark and moody. And I love this plate also. It's brash and it's strong. Again, I see that as salads. The colours when you're choosing props, I, as a general rule, I say avoid primary colours. They just don't work, really. You'll be struggling if you try and use primary colours in your plates or your backgrounds or your surfaces. Go for what I would call secondary colours or earth colours or spice colours. And I think you can see that there. But this is quite an earthy colour. It's not a pure green. And it will allow the food to sing out much more. So stick to that rule when you're choosing. And if you would like to introduce colour into your photographs, whether it's on a plate or a fabric or a background, then use those secondary colours. So you can see what I've done there is, um, it's maybe not so clear on the computer, but it's a pure blue. And instead of just having a solid blue, I've used painting techniques to really soften the feel. I'll just hold it up completely so you can see. Yeah, so. What you're doing is creating a sort of mottling effect, and I think that works really well. So if you're going to buy your own backgrounds, which is fantastic, and go for it if you want to, a couple of key things. Again, try and make sure that the background is matte, not glossy, for the reasons, again, we talked about in lighting. Um, really be careful on the size that they're saying. I know that some websites and some backgrounds, the size is a bit restrictive. They're quite small. They're almost like a table mat, to be honest. And I think if you're photographing lots of multiple plates or you want to come low down, then you simply might run out of the background. So make sure that the size of the um, one that you're making is quite large, roughly as an idea about one metre by about 80 centimetres, something like that. So I just went down to my local timber yard and I just got a plank of wood. That's it. So I use a combination of um, wood, a dye, wire brush, a hammer, because I had to beat it up. And I just spent the afternoon just washing it over, beating it up, re-washing it, layering it, layering it very thin. I don't connect them, because often when you go to a prop house, they have screwed them together. But what I did on the other side is I just got like a white wash. Yeah, so, so you do the same on the other side. There we go. Um, so you create two backgrounds with the price of one. Working sort of creatively uh, with paint really helps build your confidence and technique uh, generally when you are taking pictures. Wherever you can, definitely get some of these lovely linens. If you want to use linens, and I know napkins and linens sort of go in and out of fashion, I have to be honest, it has so many uses. And where you can, don't get it too big. Just get a nice size one, like a tea towel size, really. It just falls really nicely, you can do a lot. Same with this one, different feel. So if you can get hold of some linens, different place, that's very good.
Now, to me, I would never eat off this fork, but they look great in photography. <laughs> so these are my food forks. So a couple of things to remember, they're a little bit smaller than your normal fork. If you use a full size, it just comes at you at the camera, you know, it just looks really odd. The patina, I think it's called, has been slightly tarnished, so it's not brand new. Um, it's got a simple design. I think this is probably about as scary as I would go with the design. So they're just those very simple forks. Interesting with knives and forks. I've noticed that when I'm photographing food, and it's a plate, um, and I never put a knife and fork on the plate. So don't feel as if, if you're putting cutlery in, that you have to have a knife and fork. Just give it a fork. It looks, it looks really nice. I'm just gonna show you how to food style a curry, um, because usually they can be quite difficult to do, gloopy, and the sauce goes quite thick. Um, so I'll just run you through what I've made for you today. We've just got a prawn and um, green bean curry, which I've put some tomatoes in and then finished it with a bit of cream. The only difference being with the prawns, I put it towards the last minute so that they stay plump as they're cooked. And then with the green beans, I cook them separately. So I just blanched them to keep their really green color. And then I poured the curry right down. Um, as we said last week, I like to shoot it from cold because that way you don't get a skin forming on the sauce. And then basically to make it look hot, I thin the sauce down with a bit of water. Okay, so that's the curry, and then the rice I've just made here, literally as normal, and then I poured it right down onto the tap to um, make sure the grains don't all stick together and to stop it from carrying on cooking. So now I'm going to show you how to um, style it onto a plate. Following on with what Bill said, I'm just using one of my little dessert plates. So I'm going to start with putting the rice, if it was rice or pasta, any accompaniment, I normally put that more towards the back of the plate. Um, so I'm just going to put some on now I'm using a spoon and my fingers because I just get more control over where the food's going to fall. Um, and I'm gonna, just going to try and get a bit of height to the rice. I'm just sort of, yeah, literally seeing where it falls a little bit at a time. You know, as I said before, you don't want to put too much on the plate. You can always add some later on. So I'm sort of doing it sort of back left with the rice. Um, I think Bill was explaining before how we don't put everything in the center, um, so we slightly offset it. I'm just getting a little bit of height. I'm, I'm doing it as if it was three quarters, so as if I was a camera, three quarters again. Um, normally I'd have it on a pan so it was up high, but it's just easier for you to see. Um, okay, so that's my rice. I'm doing the same thing again with the, with the spoon, so I'm going to try and not get too much sauce on the spoon. So I've just got a bit of everything really on my spoon. And then I'm just gonna put it onto the rice. So I'm gonna sort of put it so it falls to the front and to the right hand side. Um, so you can still see the rice, but the prawns are just gonna fall onto the plate and the beans. And as I said, I'm just trying not to get too much sauce on at this stage. And the reason being, if I put the sauce on now, um, you could sort of cover up all the ingredients and you wouldn't see that there are prawns and green beans. So I'm sort of keeping it separate. And then once we've got it onto the camera, just before shooting really, we'd add the sauce. So I'm just literally putting prawns on, just sort of distributing them around so they don't look too place. And then I'm just gonna turn, I'm just gonna put a little bit of rice more on the top. I'll turn that around so you can see. So I'll move it to the camera a bit more so you can see there. So I've got some sauce, my sauce here so as I said I cooled it all down so it's all cold so just before we were sh we'd shoot it we would spoon on some sauce just like this but just being careful not to cover up the ingredients so you can have some little pores of sauce coming onto the plate I'd normally be around the other side sort of looking as if I was the camera um, and yeah and so this makes it all glossy makes it look like it's just come out of the oven um, and yes, yeah, so as Bill says, if it then sits under the camera for another 10 minutes, I probably wouldn't use a paintbrush to oil it or anything because you'd see the marks of the paintbrush. I'd probably just add a slight little bit more sauce, maybe on a prawn or two, just to get the highlights. It's all in the preparation. If your preparation is good to start with, you don't really have to do too much to it. I'd probably say that with most, most of the foods. I'm just sprinkling a bit of um, why it's flat leaf pasta, I'd normally use coriander. Okay, thank you, Rachel. Thank you for your time.